Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss Titan, the beautiful moon of Saturn that's probably one of the most fascinating objects in the entire solar system. And specifically, we're going to focus on several recent discoveries, some of which are actually kind of unexpected. But I guess first, so what makes Titan so interesting? Well, as you might know from a lot of previous videos, this is the only other object except for planet Earth that seems to have a lot of different cycles on its surface. Atmospheric cycles, liquid cycles, seasonal cycles, and even cycles involving very complex organic molecules that seem to change every once in a while. But even more interestingly, this is also an object with a really thick atmosphere. Technically, the pressure here is even higher than on planet Earth. And we know all of this as a fact based on one really important mission. The Cassini-Huygens mission that actually involved a Huygens probe literally landing on the surface. And when I first saw this video, this literally blew my mind. Because here we actually get to see what the atmosphere and the surface of this beautiful moon physically looks like. And this was really surprising to pretty much everyone. It seems to resemble Earth way too much. But there's one small exception. Because this object is so cold, the hard surface here is not made out of silicates like on Earth, it's most likely made of some kind of an ice, possibly water ice or something else entirely. Likewise, the liquid is not water, but instead is very likely ethane and methane. And so as a result of all of this, scientists were super excited about this object, mostly because it had all of the signs needed for potential extraterrestrial life. We had organic molecules, we had signs of liquid water underneath this object as a really large ocean, and a lot of different cycles. And like a lot of other ice objects in the solar system, here underneath the ice, the ocean was really huge, potentially 12 times more massive than the entire water content on Earth. Which raised a lot of questions. Could life exist here somewhere underneath these icy surfaces? Which is of course a question we're also asking about Enceladus, Europa, and a few other moons out there. But is having water enough to have life? That's of course the assumption that scientists have been making for a very long time, but this new study sort of questions this with a somewhat pessimistic proposition. Maybe water is far from enough, and maybe none of these objects can actually ever host life for one simple reason. Other elements, especially carbon elements, would never really make it into this water to then form life. And so in this recent study, researchers tried to answer this question by basically looking at various impacts on the surface of Titan. In one of the recent videos, we've discussed some of these maps that have been made by scientists over the years, and they basically show us so much about the Titanian surface that we can now even start assessing a lot of geological formations without physically being there. A lot of this was actually discovered by conducting a lot of radar observations, mostly because the surface here is practically invisible. Once again, because of that really thick atmosphere. And here they focused on various comets impacting Titan that very likely melted the surface, potentially forming large mixtures of organics and liquid water, which would then sink to the bottom, mixing with the subsurface ocean. And so based on the assumed rates of collisions, researchers in the study determine the overall flow rate of various organic molecules into the interiors of Titan, mostly because of these collisions with various comets. And that's probably the only way various organic molecules can actually go through all of this ice and reach the underground ocean. In a process determining that the overall mass of all of the organics would only be approximately 7.5 tons per year at least in terms of organics like, for example, glycine, one of the simplest amino acids required for life. And 7.5 tons is literally nothing. Since we're talking about an ocean that's 12 times more massive than the ocean on planet Earth, so little organic molecules would not be enough to sustain any life in these conditions. And unfortunately, this would also apply to other icy moons, suggesting that maybe life under these oceans cannot actually exist after all, or at least it would be very difficult to produce, unless there is some other source of organics from somewhere else. But because Titan is literally the most organic-rich icy moon in the solar system, if we don't find life here, we're unlikely to find it elsewhere. And so right now, because of this research, this maybe doesn't look too good. Luckily though, we do have a mission coming up really soon, 
that's potentially going to discover all of this. We'll talk about this in a few seconds. And that's because something else was discovered in regards to comets on Titan that might even explain some of the most famous formations on the surface. This is actually coming from a different study, and in this case the focus was on trying to explain what exactly are the dunes made out of. Now if you go back to this picture, you'll actually notice that, for some reason, there are quite a lot of dunes in the tropical regions, but practically no dunes in the polar regions. And if the dunes form in a very similar way to how they form right here on planet Earth, they have to have some kind of a sand made out of very specific materials. It probably involves some kind of an erosion, but the particles themselves also have to act very similar to sand in order not to stick together, while also piling up, forming these large objects. And even compared to Mars, dunes on Titan are massive. They can be up to 100 meters tall, several kilometers wide, and stretch for hundreds of kilometers in length. And so exactly how they form has always been very curious, but kind of unknown. Now one potential theory presents this as basically ice particles. Possibly water ice, or maybe a mixture of water and something else. Or maybe this was a result of one of the most common organic compounds in the entire solar system, known as tholine. These usually form very unusual colorations on various objects, and we know that quite a lot of them are produced on Titan through various interactions. Some of the most famous formations in the solar system are usually the result of these tholines, which basically would suggest that titanium dunes are going to be very different in color. And so here static electricity would make these tholines clump together, forming sand-like particles. But obviously both of these ideas are still very hypothetical and there is really no evidence. But now we have another idea. Maybe this is actually cometary leftovers. And specifically various particles left by comets as they go through the solar system that here on Earth result in meteor showers, but on Titan might end up producing dunes. And interestingly the evidence for that exists on planet Earth. Scientists have actually discovered various tiny particles from various comets in many different locations. And so if enough of these accumulate over billions of years, it's quite possible that they can start forming various dunes. In this case, mostly accumulating along the equator and basically avoiding the polar regions. But in the polar regions, there's actually something else that was proposed very recently based on various observations. Here on Earth, we call these unusual ridges Yardang. And they basically resemble these unusual straight formations, usually formed by soft ground erosion, which leaves behind much harder parts. Which is why we actually see quite a lot of them on Mars as well. But naturally they also exist in deserts right here. And so on Titan, it looks like instead of dunes, most of the locations seem to be populated by yardangs, implying that the polar conditions are quite different from the locations near the equator. And though maybe there's just not enough sand in the higher latitudes, all of this could also be the result of some kind of a different circulation in these regions that produces different effects. And last but not least, we also have a very important discovery in regards to lakes and I guess seas on the surface of Titan. Here one of the questions was always, are there actually any waves or any other activity on the surface of these objects? Now erosion does imply that there's maybe wind, and so liquid should have waves as well. But the observational evidence so far has been mixed. Some people seem to have seen evidence, but it wasn't very clear, yet other scientists suggested that all of this was extremely smooth and basically resembled a mirror. And so in order to try to answer these questions, researchers relied on simulations. And specifically they decided to model coastal erosion in the way that it would most likely happen on Earth, focusing on three main scenarios. In one scenario there was no erosion, in the other scenario there was erosion, but it was basically uniform and produced by material just dissolving through ice on the surface, but in the third scenario there were waves causing the erosion of the coast. And the results from these models were then compared to actual physical observations from the Cassini mission. And because under these three simulations they actually got three separate results, only one of these results ended up resembling what we see on Titan with this result requiring waves to crash onto the shorelines in order to produce similar effects. Which essentially suggests that various lakes and seas on Titan seem to also have very similar wave-like formations on their surface, even though it's not really water, but is instead a bizarre mixture of various organic molecules. And that's of course a really important discovery because 
we have no idea if liquids on other objects would behave differently from how they behave on Earth. I mean, liquid water is actually very unusual compared to a lot of other liquid elements, and so knowing this is kind of important. But luckily for us, we're going to have answers to pretty much most of this in less than 10 years. And that's because in 2028, NASA is finally going to launch the most advanced helicopter project known as Dragonfly. You can learn more about this in one of the previous videos in the description. But this mission is going to be groundbreaking and is going to finally help us answer most of the questions about Titan and other ice objects in the solar system and obviously beyond. And so whether life exists here and what everything else is made out of is going to become pretty clear once this helicopter lands and sends back its first data. And so yeah, that mission is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. But even before this mission launches, I'm sure we're going to learn so much more based on similar studies in the next few years. And so make sure to subscribe because we're going to talk about Titan once again in some of the future videos. On that note, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.